My name is Michael Schneiders. I got my Doctorate of Science in Biomedical Engineering uh, from the University of Washington in St. Louis. My interest is in studying protein crystallography and the computer tools that we use to solve uh, protein crystal structures. Uh, the general idea with protein crystallography is once you have identified a gene or a protein, you purify that protein, crystallize it, and uh, then solve uh, the structure using x-ray uh, data collection. And the structures are very useful for doing uh, rational drug design. It's like a three-dimensional puzzle. And if you find the right small molecule, the right piece, and the puzzle fits together, uh, then you can uh, have a pharmaceutical or a drug that doctors can use to treat uh, a wide variety of, of diseases. Uh, the amount of data that's collected from an x-ray crystallography experiment is uh, a collection of a hundred, a thousand, or, or more uh, data points or, or reflections. And to process a hundred thousand data points or, or possibly more uh, is very difficult or impossible to do by hand. So we need vast computer resources. And what the computer does is something called a Fourier transform. And we move from the data that's collected, which is in what's called reciprocal space, into real space. And this gives us a three-dimensional picture of the electron density around a protein. The transformation from 100,000 to 200,000 or a million data points to the three-dimensional electron density is completely impossible unless you have uh, powerful computing resources. In a wet lab experiment, you can assay the interaction of one protein target with 100,000 or, or more drugs from a small molecule library. Now, if you get a hit, if you find a, uh, a small molecule drug that interacts well with the protein, without a crystal structure, you don't know how the drug is interacting with the protein. You can't rationalize how the, pro the small molecule drug fits into the three-dimensional protein structure. So you, you, know, that the, you know you have a, a puzzle piece that fits, but you don't know where in the puzzle it's fitting. I personally became interested in x-ray crystallography uh, because of the molecular foundations of medicine, uh, a large fraction of what we know about the structure and function of proteins, nucleic acids, has come from x-ray crystallography, uh, from original work on nucleic acids by Watson and Crick, uh, all the way up to more modern studies on entire ribosomes. And the other reason that I'm interested in x-ray crystallography is that it combines um, many different subjects. Uh, not only do you need to know some, some math, some physics, some physical chemistry, computer science, by combining all of these pieces of expertise, you get to uh, then study uh, something with a huge human impact uh, in terms of uh, learning about the molecular foundations of different diseases. In the last decade, a huge focus of medical research has been the Human Genome Project. Now, the next step, now that we know uh, the three, three billion base pairs uh, that make up an average human genome. The next step is to know what uh, protein all of these base pairs code for. And so this is uh, called structural genomics. And even beyond that, um, once we know the structure for each protein in the genome, then we're going to want to know uh, exactly how the expression of each of these proteins is regulated. And so how that happens is there are feedback mechanisms that tell the genome to turn on more expression of that protein. And, and so the, the intimate details of the control of all of the products of, the, of your genome uh, have to be studied. And typically this will involve the interaction of proteins with some of the nucleic acid genome. And this is something also that can be studied with x-ray crystallography. Rather than studying only nucleic acids or only proteins, you would study the interaction. The intimate details of, of the structure of the nucleic acid, the differences in the sequence, whether it's an A, T, C, or G base pair, and, and the, the differences in sequence, that's what the protein has to recognize. So again, it's a, it's a three-dimensional puzzle where now the puzzle is, is um, all of the intimate details matter, all of the specifics of, of how the protein interacts with the base pairs determines whether or not that protein is, is responsible for feedback in one part of the genome versus another part of the genome. Once we figure out 
uh, not only uh, the structure of all the different proteins in the genome, but also how uh, cells regulate the expression of all the different genes in the genome, how, they, how transcription is regulated and translation. The ultimate goal or the ultimate payoff of this line of reasoning is uh, we can take the example of cancer. If there's a gene that's been constitutively expressed, we can use our knowledge of the interaction of proteins and nucleic acids to shut off that expression and then shut off uh, the cells that are proliferating. Or on the other hand, if there's a protein that isn't being expressed enough, we can design uh, a small molecule to interact with the genome in order to upregulate or express to a greater level uh, that protein.